You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Oh, welcome to Relax. I'm Colleen Ballinger. And I am... You need to talk about microphone. And I am... (laughs) Like, obviously, it's been a while. We had the week off last week. What's your name, though? My name's Eric. I am your husband. Nice. Um... Father of your child. Yeah, we had the week off be last children's. week. And it was a surprise to us too, by the way. Yeah, we would have given you a heads up if, had we known. We just got an email that was like, no podcast this week, guys. Yeah. And we're like, what? So uh, no podcast. We missed you guys. We did. We missed you so yeah. much. But we were told, don't do a podcast. How Definitely don't. And you know what's funny is there's so many weeks where I feel so tired. Or well, we've so, done it for like, 24 mess. weeks straight. Right. With no and breaks. Like there's so many times where I'm like, oh, I can't do this week. I'm just like, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired or whatever. Because we do these at night after Flynn goes to bed. It's 10 p.m. We're starting this right now. Um, and okay. no, it's great. We're stoked on it. But I'm just saying like it's so there are nights where it's hard to like sure pick up the motivation to like get in here and talk. We always have fun once we start. But that it was so funny because last week when we got the email, I was like, dang it. I was like ready to go. I was like so excited. Ready to go. You know, so uh, we miss you guys a lot. Anyway, this is our podcast where we talk about whatever we want. Hopefully we remember how to do it. And um, we're just going to hop into who or what we think needs to relax this week. So, Love, you go first. I go first? Because I just had one and I forgot it. Okay. So I need to remember it. Okay. Where to begin? Okay. This week, what needs to relax for me is a a television show Mm -hmm. and... um, a toy empire, if you will. I don't There's know. There's a lot of these. This could be anything. Uh, it is called Paw Patrol. Oh, yes. Of course. And if you live in our house, uh, you Just would know- Just for the past couple days. Within the past couple days, there has been a renaissance, an awakening, <laughs> if you will, oh. of, of the whole Paw Patrol universe. It has become the thing. Mm-hmm. Out of nowhere, not in mm-hmm. the thing like the everything, mm-hmm. like everything is just like Paw Patrol. Everything is a quote, a reference, a song. I feel like we should talk about toy. this, like where how this started. So we have sure. we bought Let's a minivan. Dig deep into this. I got a lot to say about it. We bought a minivan, and I don't mind Paw Patrol. I actually love when Flynn is passionate about anything. I get like super stoked. Oh yeah, on it. no. I when I say it needs to relax, like you're gonna. Th- I'm not like trying to cancel Paw Patrol. No, you know what I mean. I don't think Paw Patrol needs to hold itself accountable for what I'm about to say. I kind of do a little I, bit, okay. but uh, but we'll, we'll get into sure, why I think that. Sure. But we <laughs> so we bought a minivan, and in it there's like TVs in the back. So calls bad parents. Sometimes we let our watch our kid watch hey, TV in the back of the van. I didn't ask for it. The minivan came with, came with two it. TVs in the back of the front seat headrest. And it's like you can put in DVDs or plug in whatever. And so when we went to Target once, Eric just found the only DVD that existed still in 2021, which yeah. happened to be Paw Patrol. So apparently they don't sell physical DVDs anymore, which is how, I mean, I guess you can with certain cords plug things into this TV structure yeah. in the minivan to watch things. It's got all the capabilities. But the easiest one being it has a DVD player right up there by the driver's seat. And uh, the only DVDs apparently they sell anymore physically. It was Paw Patrol. At least at Target was just, was just a random Paw Patrol one. And I was like, well, that seems like it's for children, child. It's got dogs, it's got trucks. Let's put it in. So I'll we'll put buy it that in. and I'll throw it in there. And we don't have the sound on in the car. So Flynn can watch it, but he can't listen to it. So he, um, I mean, he could, but we don't do that. We just, we, we only let him watch it. We don't let him hear it because we don't want to hear yeah. it in the car. So no closed captions either. Just, <laughs> just straight, <laughs> silent, so little Flynn's puppies been watching this things. cartoon for like three weeks, the same one over and over again, whenever oh, yeah. he wants it, to it watch just, a cartoon in the car. It's, it's the one on the loop. Plays. He didn't know what it was called, but he was mesmerized by it. Like it was like shocking to me how much he was like loved this show that he would watch five minutes at a time on a drive to Starbucks or whatever. Any parent that is driving somewhere with a young child knows that. Sometimes you gotta put on a cartoon. It, it can get Just, intense. It's our only moment where you and I are sitting next to each and, other, not moving, can yeah. have a conversation. And so, this this would 
literally comatose him. Like he, yeah. he goes zombie. Mm-hmm. So, so one day we park the, the van in the, in the garage and he goes, I want to keep watching this. And I was like, okay, like, Wouldn't let's get watch. out of the car. Yeah. He like really wanted to keep watching. I was like, Oh, he likes this show three weeks later on mute. He's decided he likes it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's called Paw Patrol. Let's watch it in the house. And so I put it on with sound on the big TV in our house. Yes. And he went, he got hypnotized by his love for Paw Patrol after one day of watching it. And one day he was saying all the catchphrases, singing the theme song. I had never seen him pull out a, I had seen him sing a theme song to a, a show that he liked, but I'd never seen him pull out a catchphrase. Yeah. It's that was kind yeah, of he was wild like, to me. And we didn't know the catchphrases because we didn't pay attention when uh, he was watching that episode. Chase is on the case. Ch- he just goes, Chase is on the case. And we're like, and what? Rubble, rubble on the double. Rubble on the double. And we're like, what is happening? Paw Patrol so is on a roll. I actually have a video of him singing the theme song. I, I want to have Chris plop it in here because oh, you guys have to hear him sing it. It's like all day, every day. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, in on the double. So it's very cute. Um, the cutest, the cutest ever. Uh, he loves it. But why do you think he needs to relax? Well, I just I'm so like overwhelmed. I'm like taken by it like a giant wave in the surf. You know, it's just it's uh, it's just crazy to me that this thing that I I think I was aware of Paw Patrol because yeah, one time you were on tour and you were playing some theater. I think I'm going to I have a good memory for these things. So I think it was like Arizona. You do have and, there, and there was like uh, your poster there. I remember like sneaking out in front of the theater to take a picture of your poster there on the marquee. And next to it was the poster for the show that was uh, either the next weekend or the previous weekend. And it was Paw Patrol Live. And I and it, I was just like, oh, that's is that was that a, it's like a, what is that? Like a children's cartoon, but they have like a live touring yeah. show. I'm like, oh, it must be a big deal. It's just registered in my brain way in the back, way in the back. And then so then it, when it comes up again, when I'm in Target and I'm like the only DVD, I'm like, oh, that's that thing. Yeah. Maybe he'll like that. There was like pictures of like little puppies. I had heard of it. Um, I knew nothing about it. Like I'd seen lots of. Yeah. So it's. it's of it but just I th- I'm just so like amazed by how much it's taken over daily life. Oh, it's and all like, day. All I we do like, is. I'm like, do we like pump the brakes on Ugh. this? Because no, he here I am. It. I'm I'm a, I'm a grown gentleman of age. And here I'm going to do it right now. I, mm-hmm. I can list. The five Paw Patrol puppies and their leader, a male human named Skylar. Mm-hmm. Then there is Chase, who is a like a German Shepherd type dog, who is a police officer. Mm-hmm. Then there is Marshall, who is a Dalmatian. Mm-hmm. And uh, he is wow, like, I a, don't know like these a, things. drives a fire truck. Then there is Rubble, a bulldog, who is he drives a one. construction truck. Then there is Zuma, he loves who's some sort too. of terrier. She's like a life. I think guard, that's a boy. Coast you keep saying she is. The only she Zuma is. just sounds like I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't think mean Sky to gender. I don't mean girl. to gender Zuma. Sorry. Uh, just, and then there's Sky, <laughs> who is um, flying around in like a sometimes a helicopter, sometimes a plane, but it's pink. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that all five? I don't know. I don't know all their names by heart. Well, <laughs> I do. I can also. I, I won't for copyright reasons, but I could sing the entire theme song to you right now. Again, well, this is something that has happened in just t- two days. Two of my days, life. Of just maybe three, but. Here's the thing. All day with this kid, all day, it because the show is about like dogs who rescue people or, or rescue other dogs or rescue whatever, all day he just wants to go on rescue missions. So it Reenactments, is- Reenactments, if you will, of the imagination. We have to be fully committed. involved. Not even involved, no, committed. No, like we have to be on the ground needing to be rescued, stuck. Like, I like, am stuck. Or play one of the dogs flying I through am, the air. I am a kitten stuck in a tree. Like and we he have, is it is not Paw Patrol stop. on a roll there to come rescue. The me. second he wakes up to the second we go to bed, we are acting out Paw Patrol or watching Paw Patrol. I'm talking for for 13 straight hours today. <laughs> I was involved in in, so in many Paw Patrol missions. cosplay and role play, uh, and there is no like method acting. There is no getting out of it, guys. Like no matter if you have to make lunch or dinner or read an email dada, or anything. Watch, he's like, dada, dada, watch. dada, dada, mama, 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 call Sky, mama, watch. mama, watch. Oh, I'm stuck. Mama, I'm I stuck. A, I need uh, a tow truck. Mama, I need, it's like, the, it is, it is so intense. There's yeah. no getting around it. It is all day. Now, here's what I was going to say needs to relax about the show because I love that he's so excited about it. I love that when he gets passionate about stuff, it makes me really happy. Yes, um, agreed. So like, I don't mind that he loves it. No. What I don't like is that like, 
I don't watch very committedly when I watch with him, you know, it's kind of just on, but I just hear a lot of like obnoxious screaming. And I'm like, is this scary? Cause it's like, they have to rescue people. And so it's well, like these like people get in like, thing. they fall down or they get stuck in something. In the, and I just hear a lot of like weird voice actors, no offense to the voice actors. What a great gig. Congratulations. But like, I hear a lot of like, oh my God. Well, <laughs> like that's like I feel like the whole time that's all I'm hearing I'm like this is so obnoxious like, I don't like that I'm like yeah. is this okay for him to watch is he gonna start acting out like obnoxious? I'm not gonna like, comment on the act, voice actors performances no no, no. they're all I mean, doing great they're doing although great I did job. see again we had to watch a trailer for the upcoming movie of Paw Patrol he made me watch it nine times in a row today and at the end it says featuring the voices of and it shows uh, the actors and then it, it said Kim Kardashian West I guess she's doing what? the voice okay um, good for her in the film um, but yeah I, it's, I there, we, other parents like screen things for their children to yes. make sure they're appropriate like we haven't got have to do that yet because up till now if you're a parent and you're listening we got the the Coco Melons. We got well, the little baby. We got we never, have very but we've nursery never, rhymey stuff. This is the first like action yeah. adventure. We've never just let him watch something narrative. without us there knowing what he's watching. That doesn't exist. Of course, yeah, of course not. No. Wait, do you? No, of course. No, I'm just saying we don't. Yeah, it's, I was no, just imagining wait, it, us doing that. Well, you've been like, do people giggle. screen what their kids watch? I'm like, we 100% well, do. Well, we're there. We're like total yeah, helicopter we parents. Yeah, we're helicopter parents. We've been we're with quarantined them them. with them the whole time. Like, yeah, so he doesn't just watch TV and we don't know what he's watching. But this is the first thing that has like a storyline and like a narrative, you know, that like yeah. he's watching. And I'm like, should I have watched this first? There's like screaming people in it, like who are like getting hurt. Well, he's very empathetic. He wants to like people to be included. He wants to. And, not, and he's like a helper. He like mm -hmm. likes to help and he likes and he I can do it myself. Like, so it makes sense. The the underlying themes of this, it makes sense to me that he would be interested in um, characters that are want to help other yeah. people and save and they're them. driving trucks. It's great. Um, he loves it's it. It's wild, guys. though. Like he it made me it. it made me think there was this Netflix documentary series about like the history of toys that we watched. They did an episode on Barbie. They did an episode mm -hmm. on like teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was my favorite as a kid. And I, what I didn't realize with all these like toys and cartoons was that like cartoons were, were essentially founded on the marketing of toys. They would make cartoons for the sole reason of if we make the cartoon, we can sell the toy. Mm -hmm. And that's how they make ludicrous amounts of money right. off of literally us today mm -hmm. at Target. And so like now, so you, so there's this cartoon, sure. And he loves it. But now like there is a section, like a full aisle in Target. That's just all the toys and like different versions of sets of the toys. And it's just so it's, it yeah. needs to relax. <laughs> I guess it's, it needs to relax. Wow, he didn't even well, pick it though. He picked something else when we went to Target. He picked like a weird car carrier that was like an off brand toy. I know, but we still bought like seven Paw Patrol toys today. And he did, he did get yeah, that's two true. of them. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, so the guy, the guy that created Paw Patrol. Oh my God, you're going in. I still haven't the said guy that, that I created need to relax. Paw you Patrol this for 20 minutes. Um, is a billionaire. From Paw Patrol? He, uh, from Paw Patrol. And, and he, like, do you ever hear of Hatchimal? No. Is oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so he, yes. he does like, he, it was a toy company. He started a toy company with his friend and him and his friend created uh, Paw Patrol and are now billionaires. Whoa. From a toy company, though. But I'm saying like the cartoon spawn from toys i just think that's you, you would think it would be the other way around that there yeah. would be this popular like story that someone was and passionate about and telling cartoon. a story yeah. yeah and then like oh well we should make toys too because people love them and whatever but like it it's, comes from toys oh that's kind of gross and he's a billionaire wow good for him um at the age of 49 from canada okay and uh his name is R ronan harari Okay. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because he's here with us. He's not here with <laughs> us. You're, you're not going to play? You're no, not going to pretend not. to be Ronan Duran and do an interview no, about like how you created Paw Patrol? I am not going to do this. You're not going to yes and me on this? Not right now. You're love. bailing. <laughs> I've never <laughs> wanted to yes and you on this. One time you had me pretend I was the Olsen girl. Yeah. And, and I d fought you on it for days and I finally agreed to it. And I don't know why you've ever thought I would ever want to do that. Like pretend I'm not doing to it. say yes. No. And I'm here to talk about my new cartoon. No. Oh, OK. Well, Paw Patrol, we love you. I don't know what else to say. Okay. We'll, see, we'll see where it goes <laughs> and what, what happens.
Well, next we ran out of time to hear what I needed to relax. So maybe we can talk about it after uh, because we need to say thanks to our first sponsor of the day. Before Is it we Paw Patrol? If it's Paw Patrol, it's I will lose not my Paw mind. Paw Patrol. I'm sorry, sure? love. It's not. It's Third Love. Oh. Which I love because you guys haven't heard. I'm pregnant with twins. There's three of you. And um, I'm going to call you out here today, love. I'm going to call you out right now. My husband. In an ad? I, I'm, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> today he knows. He's like, those are looking big. Because <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> my, my breast area, your oh, boobs change God. a lot when you're pregnant. And they're growing, guys, which means I need new bras, which is great. And which is why I'm so excited that we get to work with Third Love. Um, Third Love is wonderful. It is time for a completely new bra redo for me because my boobs are changing so much and they will continue to change. Um, but I have a lot of events coming up. I can't just be wearing like cozy, comfy clothes all the time like I usually do. I've got my live shows coming up on July 31st. Mm -hmm. We've got some family events coming up. I'm going to start like seeing human beings, you know, mm -hmm. as like the pandemic is hopefully coming to an end eventually. And I'm going to have to wear real people clothes and find comfortable bras that actually are working bras. So I think my favorite part about Third Love is the fitting room quiz. I've talked about this on here before, but it's so amazing that I don't have to go into a fitting room and have some random employee like size me. I can just do it all with this little fitting room quiz on their site. And it makes it so easy to find the perfect bra for me and my body and my shape and my size for the time being, even though it is constantly changing. It's so nice to have a bra that fits me perfectly when I was wearing bras that were too small and the wire was poking me. And when I'm pregnant, I'm already uncomfortable. I don't need my bra making me more uncomfortable. So uh, I'm very grateful. At Third Love, they care about comfort and quality. Get the level of fit and comfort you deserve with Third Love bras, underwear, sleep, and loungewear. They have more than 80 sizes. Every Third Love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, and a scratch-free band. Find your new favorite everyday essentials from their all new feather lace collection to their number one rated 24 seven classic t-shirt bra. That is my personal favorite. That's one I like to wear. Don't feel like getting dressed in the morning. Now you don't have to meet the third love lounge and sleepwear from lazy Sundays on the couch to weekend outings designed with premium cotton fabrics available in drapey, easy fits, sized extra small to three XL. Also, another thing I love about this company is they are so great at giving back. Third Love donates all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, Third Love has donated over 40 million dollars in bras. I think that is so awesome. Third Love knows you deserve to feel comfortable and confident 24 seven. So right now they are offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash relax now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash relax for 20% off today. Okay, is it my turn to talk about who I need, think needs to relax? I wasn't English. You know what I'm saying. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Can I have a turn? Whoa, yes. You need to talk about Paw Patrol somewhere? I could talk about Paw Patrol for this entire podcast. Please don't. Podcast. We've been talking about it all day. Please don't. Podcast? Did I just say podcast? As opposed to what? Paw what Patrol. Else? Get it? Podcast. You know, it sounds the same. Podcast and podcast sounds the Pod. same. Pod. Like paw. Oh, man. Do you, know that's how, do you know that's how you pronounce the word podcast? Uh. I'm going to start like a conspiracy theory group online. It's all about Paw Patrol and how it's like infiltrated okay. our lives. Anyway, are we still talking about Paw Government. Are we allowed to talk about other things now? Colleen, who do you think needs to relax this week? Who needs to relax is spam emails that you never signed up for, mm. right? But when you go to click the unsubscribe button, like, mm -hmm. okay, if I have to unsubscribe <laughs> to spam emails, yeah. that's annoying, right? It's annoying to have to go scroll all the way to the bottom of stupid spam and then get to like the tiniest unsubscribe button in the universe. It's always next to a button that like signs you up for more emails on access. So like, if you push the wrong thing, there... wait, hold on, let yes, me finish this. Go. So that Rant. is very obnoxious. However, I can handle that. When you just click the button, it's like, congrats, you're unsubscribed. What makes my blood boil? <laughs> is when you click unsubscribe and it takes you to a, sur like a, a website yeah. that says, tell, please type out your entire email address. Give us a reason. And click the reason and write out a thing. Mm -hmm. And like, no, I never wanted these to begin with. Now you're making me work. I have to type out my email address and then fill out a survey, click another button. It should not, that makes me 
rage. It makes me so angry when I have spam email from like, I bought some clothes at some website or something and I'm all of a sudden getting 80 coupons a day. I'm like, oh, this is annoying. So I scroll down, click on subscribe. And then I, what I should see is congratulations. You have successfully unsubscribed from our whatever. Sad to see you go. Sometimes That's happens. what I want to see. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. I'm saying I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, I appreciate that. Like you're, you're hustling. You're trying to get me to look at your coupons and whatever your specials. Fine. I appreciate the hustle. Let me just click the unsubscribe button and then it's done. When I have to click it and then do work. Fill out a survey. I am enraged. Type, I out, am your enraged. Own, type out your own email where you've come from. Like yeah. I'm enraged when that happens. This could be, this could be a whole episode as well it makes me there so must angry. be some evil like conference room board meetings going on where they were like how can we design the the whole fabric of the unsubscribe system that it's as hard as possible because it's like it the tiniest font and sometimes when you like scroll to it it like disappears yes it, like scrolls up or like a pop-up back comes in front of it and like it's always hard and to then find it's like, oh, then you, and so you finally you, like you have to click on it this little like tiny so small. writing and then it's like are you sure it like all of a sudden becomes this like needy pathetic like well, and it's begging like, like who thinks that like if i'm clicking unsubscribe you think oh let's make it even harder let's make them type out all this stuff and do all this stuff that way they'll just then they won't unsubscribe so you think me being so annoyed with you that i want to unsubscribe and then i'm going to be like fine i just won't unsubscribe maybe someday i'll like no, these yeah, emails well, what no, no but these is questions like, like they're like oh, oh i'm sorry was it too many emails we were sending you can we just send you some too many emails you, doing wait, some and, then, yeah. and i feel like it's a trick question mm -hmm. because i'm like wait cuz once you unsubscribe you're unsubscribed forever are you sure no 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 are you it's sure the trick question of like do you want to receive only emails that have to do with this? Do you want to receive no emails? Do you want to see receive emails never again? Because we can tell you, you when you're going to die if you want to know that. Emails you don't want that email? In an emergency situation. I'm like, wait, which is, mm -hmm. I want them all gone. Yeah. Which one is the option for all of them not ha coming to my email ever again? How do I make, do you know what I'm talking about? Like sometimes they like kind of yeah. word it weird because you're, you're like, which one am I supposed to click? Which one is, I will never then receive an email again. The button on this is then they're like, okay, you're unsubscribed but it may take a few days. Oh, get out of here. It may take a few days because our system doesn't no. know. And then also you're blasted in the face with like oh. a million more emails from them for like days. And you're like, oh, sorry, it takes a few hours for our system. What do you mean your system? Your system doesn't recognize when I hit unsubscribe, it has to like- And then type go, out my go entire to like email a, a notary and it has to be notarized for you to unsubscribe. Oh, it makes me rage, love. Oh, I'm, sw I'm sweating. I've, that was a good one. That was a good one, love. That was a good one. You guys had some good ones. So we've never asked you guys who you think needs to relax. And so this week I posed the question to you. I asked you guys who you think needs to relax this week on our Relax Twitter. Mm -hmm. Relax underscore podcast, I think is what it's called. And some of you had some fun things. Um, Isabel said, I think I might've talked about this before on here, but Isabel. So these are, these are, you've tweeted this and mm -hmm. now they're responding with who. They think needs they to relax. Th okay. Isabel said, Netflix, the screen that pops up halfway through an episode is so annoying. The, are you still watching screen? Mm -hmm. It says, continue or back. This one I hate. I agree. I hate that that pops up because I think is it's it, rude. Is it judgy? Is it it's yeah. judging you? And it's like, obviously I'm still watching. And if I wasn't still watching. Well, maybe you're asleep and they want to like save you. Sure. Save but, energy. Okay. Then I can the rewind planet. it later. That's better than you judging me and being like, you're still watching this loser. I just find it very judgy is all I'm trying to say when mm -hmm. it says, are you still watching? Cause like, if I wasn't still watching, if I fell asleep, if I left the room, like it's not that hard for me to rewind it. And if I'm in the middle of something, if I left the room or if I fell asleep, I'm not going to click that button. Are you still watching? Mm -hmm. Whoever clicks? No. Whoever clicks, I mean, are you still watching? I, no. I think I kind of appreciate it. Like, it's, no, you don't. It's like a personal interaction. It's like, are you still watching? And I can be like, if, if it's not that hard for me to press play again, but also if, if I'm asleep and I wake up to that screen or my TV has gone to sleep because that screen came up, like, mm -hmm. good, good for me. You click no? Well, I just, I'm just saving money on just, my energy bill and the planet. How are you saving money on your energy bill? The TV's still on. It go, I think it goes to sleep if uh, nothing is playing on it. So that, okay. I'm just saying. Goes nighty night. No one like you don't feel judged when that pops up. I do. I, I mean, it's the same as when you. It you're doesn't still, happen to me that often. Like it's, it's never. Same, it's never. It's happened to me like once or twice. I feel. It's the same to me as when you're scrolling through TikTok and someone pops on the screen. You're still watching TikTok. You should be getting some sleep. Have you seen those? No. 
Oh, they're awful. Yeah. I can't stand those. Um, okay, so Lauren said the dad app, which is the Hi Daddy app that uh, I, I've i talked about this before, maybe on this oh podcast, my goodness, but yeah. I know I've talked about it in my vlogs recently. So there's an app that I despise about pregnancy called Hi Daddy. It is the worst app in the world. I think we've talked about it on here. And it gives dad's advice on what to expect with the new child about to come into their life. Cause women have all these, well, anyone has all these apps. Men can use it too, but for some reason they're categorized as just for women. Um, but there's lots of apps that are like, this is what's going on with your body. These are the symptoms you're going to be having. This is what your baby's growing today. This is how big your baby is. This but the is one specifically marketed to men fathers is like, has set up this sort of like role play scenario where it's your bro -y child kind of just shooting the shit with you. Yeah, but like uh, in the rudest, most awful, like I, I hate like strange, demeaning way. Yeah. As someone who is married, like a super dad, super husband, like a hundred percent all in, committed to this relationship, to his son who is at every doctor's appointment, who wants to know everything that's going on in my life and the baby's life, and and wants to be as as involved as he can, and is playing pot patrol all day with his kids, so hands on. It's infuriating to see that there are still apps and humans continuing the narrative that men are just duds who like Eric just like totally ninja oh. caught up two gnats in a row. The fruit flies. Why are there fruit flies in here? You know Bobby. why there's fruit flies in here. Okay. Um <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> you got a mystery. I just don't like the the narrative of like dads are dumb and they don't care about the kid. Like, oh, isn't your pregnant wife annoying that she's like you pregnant? Should, I have it. Makes me rage. I, I have it on my phone. I already have screenshots. Because it makes some. because it's funny to me in like a in a sweet way, I would say. Okay. That like how angry it makes you. It makes and me so angry because Eric's okay, Eric's is wonderful. But sometimes takes it seriously, and I'm like, you know, this is the worst app in the world. Like one well, time, he came up to me, he's like, "Medical love timelines. It it's of incorrect. The process. It is always incorrect. First of all, love. You, you can download always any of the other apps. I can't believe you ever take that seriously. It's always as a joke. Like I listened to like no our, one time our many doctors no, and nurses. One time, or was one time where I was drinking a Coke with dinner. Like I had a couple sips of Coke, and he came up to me. He's like, "Hey." The Hi Daddy app told me today. It, just because it to was lay off the job, it had, lady. It had coincidentally said that today, but I had always thought that. Like my whole life, I had thought that just from other knowings of pregnancies. Yes, but if that you weren't supposed to have caffeine. Well, that's what you're always told. But if you do the like, if you look into it, which obviously you have, and like no now, but like right. But it was just coincidental that this app inside of me, and so I just thought it was worth saying aloud. I wasn't saying definitive. This is. <laughs> Know, is, never, uh, never, uh, ever give a pregnant woman advice based on the Hi Daddy app is what I'm trying to say. And, and I know no, I learned that <laughs> and the I, hard way. And you will yeah. understand why I feel this way when I read you some that I just screenshotted today. OK, so I just screenshot the few. one that I sent you the other day. How you should pull that up if you can find it. I watch. Uh, yeah, I can. OK, so here's here's a good one. Are you ready for this? Hey, pop. Has mom sprung? A, so it's from the perspective of the baby talking to the dad. OK, giving him advice every day. Hey, pop, has mom sprung a leak yet? I know you have enjoyed the new breasts I gave mom, but don't be surprised if those udders start leaking milk. Udders? It happens all the time. Be a good boy and she might give you a taste. <gasps> what? Your unborn child is telling you to suck on your mom's boobs? Like, it's the worst app in the world. also referring to them as udders. I, who... Who's writing this? There's a human. That's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not generated by Siri. Someone I would not be friends with. Siri or Siri? Much. Siri. I think. S Did I say I Siri? Uh, yeah, you say Siri, Siri, but it's okay. I think she'd respond to I she. It is a she, I'm assuming. I, I think it's Siri, but you do say Siri. Um, in any case, these are not computer generated. These are, there is a human writing these. Do you think it's women? Absolutely not. If it's a woman, it's a woman who hates women <laughs> and has never been pregnant. Uh, so do you think it's like S Silicon Valley bros? I don't want to know who invented writes this it. app. I hate it so much. Here's uh, another one. Okay. Hey, dad. Great news. It seems like nature is putting the finishing touches on me. If I'm a little boy, my balls are starting to drop, but they won't be active for years. They can still yo-yo into my belly, though. Do yours do that? What? Like this is supposed to be giving you like informative, like information about like, like all of my apps are like, Today, your symptoms could be like 
gums bleeding because the babies need more calcium. They're growing their bones. Isn't that exciting? This is how, like, they give you so much information about the size of a Lego man, right? Like they give you so much information about these are the foods you should be avoiding this week. These are the foods you you might need extra iron this week in your diet because you have extra blah, 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 blah. Like it tells you all this information and the information this app gives dads is like suck on her tits. Like what? I am going to read this one. That I got the other day that this I one's thought the was worst so one of like all time. atrocious this one's that unreal. I screen grabbed it and sent it to you. Um, I need to unsubscribe from this app, by the way, because yeah, that's how so I bad. see it's this. It's so bad. It's just so complicated to unsubscribe. It's so bad. Uh, hot tamale alert. Yep. Mom is probably entering another, another one of those phases you love so much. <laughs> Increased <laughs> blood flow to her taco. Taco. Has her feeling the burn. So step up to the plate and enjoy that juicy enchilada. It's either that or buy her a new sh- a shower massage. Unreal. Your choice. I'm not sure she will care which hose she uses. Yeah, it can be that bad. In what insane. the? Are you kidding me? Insane, insane. Here's another one. That's the worst shower one. Mas- is that a thing? I don't know, love. Oh, we've never had to go d- that route, but like insane, insane. Like imagine a guy going to, it's like, I heard from my app that you're horny. Like <laughs> when you're pregnant and miserable, like go away. What? Okay. But like your unborn child or child's are referring. Yeah. It's all insane. Here's another one. Juicy and Pop. The choice is ultimately mom's, but she might appreciate t- talking to you about breast versus bottle feeding. It means you sacrificing the fun bags a little longer, but it's best for me and mom. First of all, the shaming, the formula of shaming in this, which is such a horrible thing to like spread to. Oh. Remember, staying involved is an important part of showing you care. Like there's so it's, it's, it's not only is it all just like, sorry, you're gonna have to share the fun bags, but also like the misinformation, like, no, breastfeeding isn't best for the baby and mom. It depends on the circumstances, depends on the mom, it depends on the baby, it depends on the health, depends on so many situations. That is so obnoxious that in 2021, there's an app telling dads like, remember, she better breastfeed. Like, that makes me so mad. I want to try and defend it here. Do not, you will lose. (laughs) What if it's just like, it's not meant to be taken seriously. It's meant to like, as that kind of humor that like angers, but it's purposeful. And it's just like, it's it's obviously for- Then there should be a disclaimer. I think more women look at this to to like love hate it than men actually use it and hold it account. And if any men, like- I believe that if any man is looking at this being like, yeah, like I don't think that's true. I think- Yes, there are. I think they all just like- you know, like Trump was our president. Uh, you don't think there's men who would read them like, yeah, fun my fun that's bags. That's true. I have like, seen some hats and come on. Bumper okay, stickers. so anyway, that's the app that we collectively um, How did this hate. come up again? Did someone it was say someone this? said it needs to relax? Oh good, yes. Um, but you know what doesn't need to relax, love? Imperfect foods. Oh. I love a funky food. Who doesn't? doesn't Imperfect little- foods is the best, you guys. The best. Every year, billions of pounds of food go to waste, often because it doesn't live up to the strict cosmetic standards of grocery stores. Don't you wish there was a way to prevent all that waste? Imperfect Foods is on a mission to reimagine grocery delivery for a kinder, less wasteful world. They deliver sustainable, affordable groceries, including produce, quality protein, eggs, and dairy, and pantry staples straight to your door. Plus, they're always adding fun and tasty new discoveries for you to try each week. All you have to do is sign up, create your flexible, personalized grocery plan, and then shop online each week and get affordable and sustainable groceries delivered directly to your door. With Imperfect Foods, grocery shopping fits seamlessly into your life, and every week is a tasty adventure. Sign up with Imperfect Foods today to save time, save money, save food from going to waste. We love Imperfect Foods. We've been using them for so long now, and we're so grateful that they want to sponsor us and work with us because it makes our lives so much easier. That Mm -hmm. like The food just shows up at our door. It's less grocery shopping for us, and it's always fun to see what we're going to get and to try cooking new stuff and tasting new things. Sometimes the ones that look a little bit funky. A little bit funky. Tastes the best. That's and that's totally talking to you, tomatoes. That's totally Eric's jam mm-hmm. because Eric, when we like, even if we go like plant shopping, Eric's like, "What's the one that looks the weirdest?" Yeah, I want the one that looks like he always a goes bit, for like the weirdos. Sick. So he always gets excited <laughs> when there's it. like 
be like a funky looking carrot or something. He mm -hmm. like gets super stoked. It's really fun, um, super easy, and you guys would love it. So if you want to check it out right now, Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off plus free shipping on your first order when you go to imperfectfoods.com and make sure to use promo code RELAX. Try Imperfect Foods now and for a limited time, get 20% off plus free shipping on your first order. Go to imperfectfoods.com and use RELAX to sign up. That's $20 off plus free shipping at imperfectfoods.com offer code RELAX. No horrible shipping costs there. No way. <laughs> All right, we have a couple more uh, suggestions from you guys of things who need to relax. And then Eric wrote a song. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the episode, but I'm making him sing it. He's like, Shane, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And I'm like, you're doing it. Oh, gosh. So uh, stay tuned for that. But first, Liv said who needs to relax is people who ask questions or bring up things during meetings just to hear the sound of their own voice, mm. which brought up a whole thing for me that I feel needs to relax. It's very important, which is meetings. On the phone, phone just meetings. In no, no, phone meetings that happen where they just read an email they've already sent you. <laughs> it is one of my biggest pet peeves in the entire universe. Please tell me, anyone listening. I don't know if that's watching, a part of anyone else's. Well, maybe it is. Oh, it's got to be a real go thing that yeah. everyone has. I cannot tell you the amount of times where I've been sent a long email. And then about we're going to have a, a conference call or Zoom about, about the email. And then they just read the Yeah. And they the go, we really email. need to have a conference call. And I go, okay, what, why? Like, what is it about? Happy to hop on a call. But like, for, for what reason? Like, oh, we just want to discuss, you know, whatever aspects of this email. And every time I know what it's going to be. And I'm right every time I'm like, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've like written my agent who might be listening. Um, and I've been like, is this a necessary call or is, are people going to be reading the email they already sent me to me? And he's amazing. And he's always like, don't worry. I make, I always make sure our calls are mandatory. Like, you know, whatever. And I cannot tell you the amount of times that we get on these calls and they literally go, so let's just pull up the email we sent you yesterday. Um, and let's just go through that. And by go through that, I'm not, you guys, I'm not trying to sound awful. Like I'm not kidding. This is not exaggeration. They just read it to me. They just read it. They don't expand on any topics. They, they're nothing. No other conversation is had. It is just them reading a four page email to me uh -huh. on the phone. And I just go, OK, yep, I see that. OK, got it. Yep, it's all right here. Got it. Thank you. And then that's the and it's 15 minutes of them I, reading I will an email that they send to me. That you've told me about this, and then I was involved in one, and that exact thing did happen. It does I happen think twice. Um, but I don't think that's what was it, Lydia? I don't think that's what she, what she was talking about. about. I think that's more about. But I think more it, a you thing. I know. I think it does apply to what I'm saying because well, yes. I think the whole purpose of that is like, mm, I think I need a phone call tomorrow to feel like I'm doing something like. So I'm just going to like read an email yeah, I sent her I already. Yeah, I respect and, that. Like I have a job and and they, they're they paying me to do this. So I, I should give them a reason to think to that they should continue something. paying Not me. Not saying these people don't work but hard. Also, they work very hard. But it's just. Of course. Yeah. And also in, in social, to break it down more like uh, social situations, there are types of personalities that need to be heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, uh, their opinion or, or just to be heard in general. Like I'll I'll experience this on like. Um, like table reads that mm -hmm. over Zoom with a mm -hmm. hundred cast members, like you can tell. I don't know, like. Uh, mm hmm. You're gonna finish the sentence? No, I was just like, should I say that? Uh, but there's certain personalities that just they want to, they want to chime in and and like. Sometimes it's it's to be funny, and they are funny, and sometimes it's just like though they need it to be. They need seen to be heard. heard. Yeah. Mm hmm. That question wasn't because you genuinely wanted an answer to that question. You wanted um, some FaceTime. Yeah, it's like when you're when you have like you're in class and, and they go, does anyone have any questions? And then people ask questions. And then there's always someone who like keeps asking questions when like the mm -hmm. bell has rung and you're like, you these aren't real questions. You just want the teacher to say, that was a great question. Right. You know, it's like some sort of affirmation that they're getting yeah. from asking your question. And, yeah. and I just want to, I just want to clarify on my little rant about email phone calls. I have had phone calls where we go over an email and I have questions and they elaborate on things and they ask me questions. I'm not talking about those, e those phone calls, those phone calls 
where there's like a conversation going back and forth about the email and they're elaborating on things mm -hmm. and they're going like, oh, so this part of the email, what we what we are wanting here is blah, 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 blah. Like I've had lots of those and those are fine. That's not what I'm talking about, by the way. Those are fine. I'm not kidding when I say it. Eric can vouch for me on this. <laughs> oh God. There are phone calls where they lit the phone meetings where they're 15, 20 minutes long, where they're literally just reading. I know, love, word they're for terrible. Word. You don't have to be like so like self-conscious that like you're gonna get like you're you seem like like a terrible person or something. I like, feel like you're it's not, terrible. Yeah. I know. I feel like but it's, uh, it's true. This happens all the time. Okay. I'm sure in like uh certainly in like corporate America, like that is very relatable. That there are oh, lots of conference crazy. calls and meetings that like people know are completely Su unnecessary. superfluous and only so that like people they can have a meeting and schedule a meeting yeah and, be, or and feel justified <clears throat> in getting paid i also don't like the phone meetings where it's like they they schedule this meeting for like a week in advance and it's like everyone has to be there and, all, and then they get on and it's like two minutes and it's something they could have emailed i'm like okay mm -hmm. this could have been done a week ago in the email all the emails we went back and forth trying to schedule this you could have just said like yeah it, Aside from my my mother, I don't think there's ever a phone call I've had where I'm like, this could this could have just been an email. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually yeah, true. Yeah. This one you're gonna agree with hardcore, and we might have talked about it on the podcast before, but Evelyn said paper straws need to relax. They always make the drink taste weird, like a wet paper mush, and eventually seals at the top after drinking from, making it impossible to sip any more of your drink. Couldn't agree more. Save the turtles. Yes, of course. We have metal straws in our house. Paper straws are just, I, it could be my favorite drink in the whole world. I will not drink it if they give me a paper straw. It is. Mm -hmm. They're terrible. Undeniably the worst invention in the but world. But I'll take it over a plastic straw and I hate, <gasps> oh, well, I hate, turtles? I hate metal straws. So I am, I am, I'm, I'm a user of paper straws. I mean, I'm, I'm. Wait, you like paper straws better than metal straws? I'm holding straws? myself accountable right now. I use paper straws. Over metal ones? Yes. No, you use, you use plastic ones here. Uh -huh, you reusable ones. Yes, yeah, we like, have reusable plastic why, ones. Like we have a pipe cleaner kind of thing. And yeah, we clean them and they're in our dishwasher, etc. You don't. We do not have paper straws in this home. No, but when I when I'm in a to go situation, no, no, I will. I'm I'm not like bringing metal straws or reusable. I do thick plastic straws with me. I will use a paper straw, um, because that is to me better than metal. Man, I don't know. But like it, the worst part about a why paper like straw to ones? me is that they last. 10 to 15 minutes before they like do the fold over. Like, you 10 know, to 15. You know, you know, like a to go cup has like the plastic thing that you poke it through mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a sharp mm -hmm. star configurations. A paper straw with moisture, which is silly because it's designed to be a straw, in that grip of that star pokey thing, it becomes a, a, a it breaks in folds and it's then horrible. it's no longer a, an operative it's straw. It's absolutely awful. What the heck? It's awful. And I can't believe you say it lasts 10 to 15 minutes. Like whenever I've used a paper straw, I'd say I have two minutes tops well, before not, it's disintegrated. I'm not even getting into the mushy end that's in your oh, mouth. Disgusting. I'm talking about at the point of entry into the to-go No, it's cup. all bad. There's nothing good about it. It doesn't, it doesn't do the, its job that it's supposed to do. You can't even call it a straw. We're not, let's not even call these straws. You were straws. just defending it. And now you're <laughs> I'm just saying I'll take it over a plastic or Why a metal a straw. Why a metal one? I just don't. I think that things... And why over a plastic one? Beverages within metal. You just I, said you I prefer taste... paper over everything. No, not a reusable plastic one. Oh, reusable plastic. I'm okay. pretty sure I made that clear uh, towards the beginning of this yeah, okay. uh, rant. But like uh, beverages in metal, um, I, I cannot, I taste the metal. Like like okay. the, your metal tumblers, I don't use because I, t I, I there's like a tint. I, I, I feel like I taste it. And metal straws, the same thing. Tastes cold. I feel like I'm drinking out of a pipe and I, I taste it. the pipe. Uh, Give me the pipe. Yeah, it is cold. <laughs> Give me the pipe. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's too late. Your merch just came out. <laughs> that a t-shirt that said, "Give me the pipe." <laughs> Christian, <laughs> I like this one because I was just talking about this with Eric yesterday. Christian said, "Having to break in a bed after you buy it, or same thing goes for pillows. Why can't they already feel soft and used?" Now I don't feel this way about like we're not talking about beds our beds and pillows. Mattress. No, no, <laughs> it's not the next <laughs> ad. Although we do love it. Um, no, but I was just talking about this with shoes because uh, Eric yes. is the sweetest and he just, he bought me a pair of a new pair of shoes the other day that are so comfortable. Why I keep buying you shoes? Cause you don't wear them right now. You're barefoot. What? Well, yeah, I'm not wearing you them in my you house. You don't wear shoes until you leave the house. And I you, think it's so weird. You wear shoes all the time. And I'm going to say like, you don't, you don't, you don't put on shoes unless you leave a car. Like you'll like bring shoes to the car and yeah. be barefoot in the car. Yeah, yeah, I hate and then like, shoes. if you have to go into a place of business that like We've literally about requires this. We've talked shoes. We've talked about this. Uh, sure. 
But you wear shoes all the time, which I think is suicidal. Like, I think that is wild, wildly inappropriate. Not all the time. You're wearing them right now. It's 11 p.m. Guys, in our house. Knew... Why are you wearing shoes? Why don't <laughs> I can't? Our, we have hardwood floors <laughs> uh -huh. and they are littered. <laughs> littered with litter with uh, with kitty litter no mm -hmm. offense to another sponsor kitty poop club um <laughs> and and just the crumbs of whatever it is you've eaten or our mm -hmm. son has eaten mm -hmm. and you've eaten by the way bagels um well toast how often you pull out that vacuum love mm, once a month that's no i'd say that's accurate. i would say once a year that's not true definitely um, once a month there's lots of like little textures on mm -hmm. the floors of this house but shoes are Cat so comfortable textures, i cannot crumb do it. textures and like to me i'm like our son when something is sticks to the bottom mm -hmm. of my bare foot oh. i i can't and i have to like it's you just, just it's just wipe too it off much and you, go. and you can't walk a foot in this house without something becoming stuck to the bottom of your foot i don't know how you do it i can't frankly. shoes are so uncomfortable i cannot stand shoes i've always been like that i've never liked shoes but i was just talking about this because Eric bought me these really adorable lavender pumas, right? Are they pumas or are they? They're pumas. Um, I don't know shoes, guys. Sorry. I never had like fancy shoes until I married Eric. I've always done like Payless. So uh, Eric loves buying fancy shoes. They're pumas. Are Sneakers. pumas not fancy? Well, I mean, they were. This is your microphone. I got. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got them at a, what's that place in the mall? That's silly. What's I don't that know. Silly place? Spencer's? No. Uh. That's, where they sell shoes, like it's journeys. That's silly. I don't know. It's a shoe it store. It seems silly to me. It's not, <laughs> it's not like a Foot Locker or a, um, I don't know, like the Nike store. It's just, we're like, we're going to call ourselves journeys. We're going like to have like journeys. lots of like colors. And it's just, there's not even going to be walls to our store. It's just the whole wall opens up and it's just a bunch of sh shoes and backpacks and socks. We're going to call ourselves well, journeys. I love the shoes you got me because not journeys, guys. First of all, they're adorable. But second of all, instantly comfortable they're like walking on a cloud comfortable i don't have to break oh, them good. in i love them and i you were immediately like i, I hate I, when I, you have to break in a shoe immediately maybe i was like i hate it i hate when you have to break in a shoe i always get blisters that like why why can't they just come comfortable i think that's mostly for shoes they're like oh these shoes they take I some time that. to break yeah, in I hate that. especially boots give them time to break in like what no, I'm buying them. Make them comfortable now. What does that make it more I mean, personal? It that like it is formed to your foot after a while. You no. The whole term "broken them in" means it's like it's more. I don't know. Personal, identifiable to you that you. So you just have to be in pain in. for two months first. You're earning it. There's oh, some, some get out of like here! It's a shoe. It's taking, You're stepping it's on taking it all day. years for these boots to break in. No, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, that's no. Okay. Not a thing. Okay. Um. So this one is from Megan. I'm just taking everyone's things that they need to relax and expanding on them a little bit. Picture frames have to relax. My cats are constantly knocking them over and they break so easily. True. Did I do that recently? Knock over a picture frame? The back frame? of picture frames? Like because it's like hard to get. I don't know what you're talking about. I think I did that as a who needs to relax and I said the back of Pic picture frames oh, yeah. in like an episode. Well, I just bought some new picture frames. Uh -huh. And what I think needs to relax is why is it a thing? to put the price tag or like stickers all over the front glass of a picture frame. With Gorilla Glue. Like it does not come off. It will never come off. Why is that a you thing? You have to take the shard of glass off and scrub it with a with soapy water and a razor if you want that sticker. It makes me crazy. Like. Hey, frame companies, put your price putting, tags not on the glass. Stop this. It's absurd. <laughs> like why are you putting your price tags in? And, and there's always multiple. Like, oh. it's like, it was this price, but now it's this price. And now it's this price again. Oh. Like, and Marshalls, what? are you so worried about the theft of your $6.99 picture frame that you've designed the sticker with the slices in it? So there's no human way to peel it off <laughs> without it splintering. <laughs> like it's one starts as one sticker that you try to peel it off. And all of a sudden you got eight stickers Get super out of here. glued to your glass frame. Makes me crazy. We, I just crazy. bought some picture frames because I like redid some of the shelves in our living room. And this... I've got to tell you guys, they've been up for three days. There's no pictures in them. And those stickers are still on the glass. Yeah. And I'm going to buy, I'm going to get some cute new pictures printed. I don't know if I'm going to take off those stickers. They got, they got red clearance stickers That's on That's a too. really good one. Is that what they said? The no, stickers? it is not. That's they said just said. frames. And then I've like, never seen a price tag more stuck to anything than it then, is to a, a oh, $5 picture frame from me Home Goods. So angry. Oh. <laughs> 
Like, I'd rather not look angry. at pictures of my family than I'd like, rather not. I, and, and like every day I go in that living room and the shelves look so much better. Like I feel like I did a pretty good job on them. But I see every day is that they taunt me those stickers. And you're They're someone like, who has a phobia. Yes. Like a deep psychiatric. A deep phobia a diagno- of stickers. A diagnosed phobia of stickers, I would Truly. say. Truly. Like I hate stickers. And this is something that now I have to like struggle with. I feel like you always have to like soak it. Oh, yeah. But like when you're talking about a picture from you have to take the sheet, the very thin sheet of deadly glass. Yeah. People have died, I'm sure. Trying to get these stickers off. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What if? That'd be oh what a God. tragic way to go. That's that should be in a script. Like a character accidentally Love dies from slices skin. an artery <laughs> trying to get God. a sticker off. It's like a Monty a Python four, sketch. This is so absurd. Frame. You know what? I'm so upset about this. I need to calm down. Okay. So I'm very happy pull up the calm app on that phone. the next ad today is, is, is the calm app. Oh, yes. Here's the bad news, guys. The world is full of uncertainty. And that might leave you feeling stressed or anxious. It also Mm -hmm. might be full of stickers stuck to glass frames. And that that could leave you really stressed. Want some good news? You can navigate change, feel more relaxed, and quiet your mind with Calm. Okay? We love the Calm app. You guys have heard us rave about it before. We're going to rave about it again. Life-changing. It's so good. We're partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that improve the way you feel. Clear your head with guided daily meditations, improve your focus with Calm's curated music tracks, and drift off to dreamland with Calm's imaginative sleep stories. And if you go to calm.com slash RCE, you'll get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming and new content is added every day week. There's over a hundred million people around the world who use calm to take care of their minds. And we are included. People are stressed, man. I know. A hundred million people. Crazy. Yeah. Sleep more, stress less, live better with calm. We use use this. I'd say daily. Yeah. I use it every day. (laughs) You like Eric. I always like, I feel like the other morning you were tossing and turning and I heard you like put on something and put under your pillow. So you'd hear it. It's a nice little sleep story. Yeah. It's going on a, a train ride. It's really great. Through for, Ireland. Through, ooh, through Ireland. How mm-hmm. nice. Um, it's really nice if you're feeling stressed, but also we both deal with insomnia at times, and it always is a great way to get your mind to stop racing and uh, just kind of calm down. It's really wonderful. We use it. We paid for it before we were sponsored by them. We don't we're even still get this 40% off. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting the deal you guys are getting. So for listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash RCE. Go to C-A-L-M dot com slash RCE for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash RCE. Tell them we sent you. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh my it is gosh. time. We should have done this sooner. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention it sooner. What? Eric wrote a song. I haven't even heard it yet. All well, I know. Should I say what I know? Should I say nothing? Maybe you talk about the song. Well, yeah. I, I um, People who listen to this podcast know I like to look at the Apple reviews, like the Apple podcast reviews, and either use them verbatim or... Uh, Use them as inspirado mm-hmm. for a song. Mm-hmm. Um, these are not things, this is not an album I've been working on for months or years. This is like I, uh, you were putting Flynn to sleep tonight and I was looking through and I have come up with something mm-hmm. in a half an hour. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they're kind of. So a mess. this is from Apple Reviews? Yeah. So there was a, there was a, um, a review on Apple Reviews. I went to grab my phone. If people thought I was kidding towards the beginning, here is a Paw Patrol figure. It's all over our house. If you're watching, Flynn, or Eric is showing it. I'm Paw showing Patrol this figures. is Skylar on his uh, vehicle, and this is Zuma on their vehicle. It's a boy. We, don't know. <laughs> we do. It's not um, a girl. I don't know why he thinks Zuma's a girl. Uh, but in any case, yeah. So I, I was looking through the Apple Reviews earlier tonight while you were putting Flynn to sleep. Um, and there was one that caught my eye, my attention, uh, from someone named Peyton, Peyton Rhea. Peyton Rhea. <laughs> I love your last name. Um, and they said, I cannot thank y'all enough. The past few months, I've had to commute over an hour to work. I look forward to this podcast every Wednesday morning. Aww. 
Um, I'm a big fan. I love watching Colleen's videos. Thank you. Uh, I'm only 20, 21 years old. I have no children, but I'm now obsessed with truck tunes. <laughs> oh, gosh. I get that. They're good. I, We're I listening totally to it today. understand. Uh, thank you for the podcast. Um, but it made me think that, um, and I've seen other comments where people listen to this while they mm -hmm. drive on a work commute. Mm -hmm. um, as does Peyton. And I saw, I just heard the name Peyton. And I saw the word y'all, like I cannot thank y'all enough. And I was mm -hmm. just like, this is, this is a country song. Oh, yes. We're in for and, a treat. Uh, I've never written a country song, um, but I, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a country music fan. No, you're not. Yeah. One of my favorite musical artists of all time is Hank Williams, the senior. Uh, I think his music is fantastic. And it's when I, when I originally moved to California and drove across the entire country by myself, I listened to a lot of Hank Williams. What? Especially driving through like the middle. Like country music, you listen it's to old, country It's music? old. That's that's like. Uh, like old stuff. Not like the new stuff. 50s. Like we're making it on the back of my pickup truck. Well, no, no, no shade. I think it's, I, I some of it is actually, some, there's some really good country music that is current. Yeah. There's, there's, I mean, most of the songs that I really like are about like hangovers and stuff like that, which uh, they're like very. Like what? Literal sing one and relatable. For me. I'm not going to sing one for you. I'm going to sing my I've own. I've never heard you listen to a country I song. I do. I'm sorry that I like it. And that no, it's fine you that you so like it. No, it's not that it upsets me. I just like I'm shook at because I've I've been with you for years and I've never heard you listen not to a like country che song. Not like cheesy. Stuff. Like it's good. It's good. Like good music is good music is what I'm saying. I agree is with what, that. Is what I'm uh, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. I've what's your experience with country music as I take a sip of? Uh, um, wine? I love music. I love music so much and I think music is wonderful and important and necessary. And I'm grateful there are lots of types of music for people to enjoy because not anyone, no one is the same. We all have different tastes. And my personal taste is that country music is the bottom of my list of music that I like listening to. That's fine. That's, but that's your personal but choice. But I also, I understand that people love it like you do, apparently. I just never knew that you not liked it. Not all of it. No, I think like, I think it gets the stigma that it's like, um, Pick up drugs and we'll make an eye right. on the back well, of my well, car. Well, what you're saying is that there's like a specific formula that they know that works and can make money. And I think that's certainly true. But that's also true in pop music. That's whether true. like dance in the club, shake it like I want mm -hmm. you like. Uh, yeah. Like there's a lot of lyrics I for certain pop songs and artists that I will not mention mm -hmm. where it's like, wow, this is like, mm -hmm. was this written by a marketing team? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I think country gets like a very specific rap because. I mean, I am going to say the word pickup truck in this song. OK, <laughs> but, love it. But um, it's but like I said, like this, this was like I, I wrote this tonight in 20, mm -hmm. okay. 20 minutes. So like, uh, well, judge me anyways. I don't I don't know. I'm not going to judge you. I love you. It's OK. It's OK. If you <laughs> I'm do. excited to hear it. I'm, uh, I just was I, I'm stoked and I love that you're doing all different types of music. Every time you write a song, it's a different one. Um. A different genre, but I just was surprised to hear you say you like country music because I've never heard you listen yeah, to or no, sing I, a country song I, I in my do. life. Yeah, especially you got to listen to some old Hank Williams. It's All right, so great. I'm down. I always wanted to play him in a movie, and then they made a like a biopic of him starring Elizabeth Olsen as his wife what? and uh, Tom Hiddleston. I don't know if you know who that actor is. No. He plays Loki in that another Marvel. I don't know any actor. Actors. Um, and it was it was not good, and I feel like. Um, just gonna say, I feel like the reason it was not good is because sometimes because you weren't Hank Williams. Yes, and also like sometimes actors insist on when they're playing in a biopic of a musical performer, they'll insist on singing the songs themselves, and I think that is such a ballsy, strange thing to do to be like, "Well, I'll sing it," and not use like especially when it's a very famous musical artist, like uh, the Queen movie, right? Uh, that actor did not was not like use my voice. He was like, it was like use Freddie Mercury's voice. Like, how am I supposed to? But in this movie, the actor was like, I'll sing. And, but he didn't sound like Hank Williams at all. I don't think it was an actor's decision. I, I don't know if it is either. I'm not blaming them so. either. But I feel like in that Elton John movie also, like that guy sang. Yeah, but I, again, songs. I, I don't oh, yeah, think that that's a great decision. actor. But like, uh, yeah, I don't. I thought it was it's to me. It's not. It misses the point, I guess. OK, stop stalling. <laughs> it doesn't sound like I'm stalling. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what am I doing? You're singing. Oh, okay. Oh, so the other thing. Oh my God, love. The other thing is that song. when I was like doing this, like I don't know how to sing country. So I, I so I, I watched. Uh, you actually walked walked in on me watching a five minute YouTube tutorial on how to sing country. That is true. Am I boring you? And you walked in on me a five minute tutorial on how to sing country, and all they said to do was start low and go up. Like it's just you're just supposed to scoop. 
Okay. Is that a term you've heard in your yes, musical education? Yes, it is. Education? But why are you just talking about the the? Well, I'm just saying if it sounds not like it, I'm doing anything at all, it's because I'm not. I watched a five minute okay. YouTube Let's video just hear it. tonight. Enough with the excuses. Like, Start low and go up. What? Okay, just sing it. Listen to relax on my work commute. Keeps me company while I'm driving through. Miss my exit, no gas in my truck. Didn't have time to get my Starbucks. Now it's 7:48. Fuck, I know. I'm gonna be late I've been working a long Long, long time I've been working a long Long, long time And I need to relax Don't I know it So much traffic here on the 405. Everyone's just out here just trying to survive. Hope that they all have a podcast too. Pass the time on their work commute. Now it's it. 53 No my boss gonna yell at me We've been working a long 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 time We've been working a long 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 time And we need to relax Don't we know it on my bumper is a sticker that says live love laugh and always be kind at home in my kitchen is a sign that says but first cookies but first cookies and I need to that in Peyton's house she has a sign in her kitchen mm -hmm. that says butt first cookies Just, that's I went on a tangent there I feel at the end and I needed to explain yeah live love like a sign from home goods that says live love laugh right and a sign that says butt first cookies nice uh thanks Beautiful. Peyton for the five star review on uh apple podcast I think that was your first full length song you've written was it really yeah, I think so. Length? No, yeah, that like, was like a full like yeah, that like could verse, be on an chorus, album. First chorus, then a bridge. Yeah, back to uh, yeah, yeah. You fully did like the full, full thing. There. I think we should have. I think we should have an album. Man. You should. I have never I sung. Have this, a, have, I've never sung on this podcast. We got to get in the studio. We got to put these on. Okay, let's do it. Who wants Spotify. a relaxed album starring Eric Stocklin? Because I no one, not even me. I want it, lovey. Beautiful. What'd you think of that? Love that. I don't it. think I did the scoop enough. I don't think I sounded country. You did it a enough. couple times. No, it was country. I need more training. It's like a ballad, a country ballad. Well, anybody out there listening to this time. right now, driving to work, and you're maybe a couple minutes late. Yeah. Who cares, man? You've been working so hard. Like, just relax. <laughs> just relax. Hope you're, hope you're enjoying this. Um, that was beautiful, love. Great nice. work. We love it. You guys all love Eric's songs, as you should. He's very talented. I don't know that they do, but you tell me that. They, they tell me That's, you do. It's fun for me. I don't. I don't care. Yeah. Um, well, I care. They, they, they love it, and I love it. Uh, you know what, though? You know what I love? You love jewelry. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're always. I do, but when we come back, uh, I'm, we do have a little uh, one more ad for you, for you guys, a, a really exciting one that I am so stoked to talk to you guys about. But first, I want to let you know that when we come back, we're going to play a fun little game. We are? <laughs> yeah. News to me. Well, surprise. Um, but yes, we do have a wonderful new sponsor this week that I'm so excited about because I've been wearing some of their jewelry for yes, a while now, but um, this is the first time we get to talk about it. So I'm very, very excited to, that we are sponsored with Ana Luisa. Um, this is an incredible uh, uh, jewelry company. They're founded to bring clarity to the jewelry industry. They design pieces with a more beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible. Transparent business practices always and small batches that are kind to the earth. This really jumped out at me when they first reached out to collaborate with us. I was like, mm. I love when businesses care about their products. They care about the earth. They care about making a difference, but they're also passionate about making yeah. good quality product. And this really shows with their stuff. So I have a few pieces of theirs, but I really enjoy like super dainty jewelry. Like that's my jam, like really dainty, chic every day. Like I never change my jewelry. So I always want to kind of wear it for a while. Mm -hmm. Just timeless, affordable quality, conscious luxury, long lasting, just like that's my jam. Those, Tiny, those dainty, Those are some cutesy. buzzwords, love. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but I, when I was going through, uh, all of their beautiful options, there is a mama necklace that I was like, yes. And you guys know I'm wearing mama necklaces right now. I have a lot of mama necklaces, but they have a beautiful one that I love so much. That I actually bought one for me and my mom. And so, I had also gotten one for yeah. you too. <laughs> so so yeah. you have three. I have three. Well, I have two now. My mom has one, but, um, they're so nice because they're so dainty. And sometimes with dainty jewelry, it like breaks really easily or like bends, but it's so well made that it just feels like sturdy and strong. And, um, it's just, it's so beautiful and dainty. I really, really love it. I have another one. Say my dainty again. <laughs> <laughs> dainty is the way I've always described my favorite type of jewelry. I don't like big clunky jewelry. There's not even ad copy what you're reading. It literally <laughs> just says dainty on your phone. <laughs> I, know. I really do love dainty jewelry. It's always been like my go-to word when people ask what kind of jewelry I like. And they got a lot of it. Mm -hmm. There's another one that I love that's just like this beautiful little diamond. And it's like pretty dainty love on a gold chain. It's, it's so pretty. Diamond? They have so many beautiful things. Um, carbon neutral, 100% of the carbon emissions related to their products. Life cycle are offset. Exceptional quality. They even offer a 365 day warranty. And they have limited batches, ensuring the highest quality production standards while eliminating excessive waste. So if you guys want to check them out, strongly recommend analuisa.com slash relax, A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash relax to treat yourself and your loved ones. You can use my code relax to get 10% off. This is such a wonderful product and they always have very fair prices with jewelry starting at just $39 and they have new jewelry collections released every single Friday. So there's always new stuff to check out if you don't like what they have now, but you will. It's all really beautiful. So that again is analuisa.com slash relax, A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot com slash relax. Absolutely recommend them. They're a great brand making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. So go check out analuisa.com. A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A.com slash relax and use my code relax. So go check them out. You guys will absolutely love it. Just like I do. And You're my mom so does. At, so good at spelling love. I'm so good at spelling, aren't I? You're always just showing off during these podcasts, just, just spelling, spelling things out. I just love to spell. What can I say? I love to spell and I love mama jewelry. Mm -hmm. Those are my things. Spell mama. Mm -hmm. You don't even know how to do it. Okay. All right, guys. So to end off this episode, we're going to play a game. Before we did the podcast, we came out with a couple little teasers and we would play games in the teasers. And I think we played it's this in a while in one of the teasers for that was the podcast. 25 hour and a half of podcasts. I know. Ago. So um, basically what we're going to do is word association, which I'm horrible at this. I'm kind of horrible at all games. One, because I'm extremely competitive and two, because my brain doesn't work that fast. Mm -hmm. My brain works fast in other ways. Like I can think of 20 things at once, but I can't while you're saying something, I'm thinking of something else. So it takes me a long time to process what another person is saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm not listening to well, you. I also, I don't understand this game. So, so this game, I also will not be good it. at it. But You'll this be would be fun to listen to. So for example, well, we it know. might, this might be a total disaster. If anyone's still listening, bless you. So like, for example, 
You just played a song on the guitar. So let's say we start with the word guitar. I would say guitar. You might say. Strum. I would say drum. Bang. Hair. Haircut. You just said haircut. So you repeated hair. So I lose. So then you would lose. So you lose if you. It's it's debatable, but you lose if you take too long, if you repeat a word or if you say something. I've never heard of this game. We have played it. Still never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try it. And I'm really uh, bad at this because when there's pressure and you have to go fast, like I'm really bad at games. Like I'm going to be. Oh, so there's fast. pressure and we have to go fast. Yeah, because you have to go fast, which oh. makes me feel like no offense, love. I'm not going to be good at this. Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you pause in the middle of your sentences and mine. I, so I feel like this might be a hard one for you, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You go first. You pick any word um, in the world. Rug. Hair. Cut. <laughs> um, scissors. Sharp. Strong. <laughs> I hate this game. We're going too slow. It's supposed to be way faster uh, yeah, than this. I think you lost originally when you what? went. You went. Uh, um, strong is what you said. Okay, let's start over. Okay. No pausing. We have to just fit fire outwards. Let's see how okay. bad this goes. If this fails, which it will, we'll play 20 questions. Okay, go. Air. Eric. Is my name. That's not a word. (laughs) You can't say, is my name. We're so bad at this game. This is horrible. I don't understand. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know the rules. I have explained the rules. Did you say one word? Yes, one word. It's word association. Okay, try again. Oh, love. What? Okay. I'll start. Flower. Pedal. Bike. Fast. Flynn. Paw. Patrol. (laughs) Car. (laughs) Truck. Dump. Garbage. Trash. Dumpster. <laughs> you just went from dump to dumpster? <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Those are different words. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, this is the worst game ever. Is anyone listening? This is awful. We're both so bad at it. I feel like this game is funny when one person's good at it and one person's bad at it, but we're both just equally terrible at it. Uh-huh. So let's try 20 questions. Okay. I don't know why we thought a game would be fun. This is not the type of I thing was, we do. I'm having time. fun. I just, I'm just trying one more time. Okay. Pants. Shirt. T. Love. <laughs> you can say T. <laughs> why not? You said sure. I said T. T is not a word. It's a letter. T like a golf T. Love. No, you lose. Right. <laughs> do you want to try again for real yeah. without saying just T? Phone. Case. Call. <laughs> Number. Digit. Digit? You can't just say the same word. I know. I, I lost. Um, this game is awful. Let's play 20 questions. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm going to think of something random. Okay. And you get to ask me 20 questions quickly. Why is there always a Yes time or no limit? questions. Yes or no questions. Okay. And you have to guess what it, I'm thinking of in 20 questions. Okay? Okay. So let me think of something. Let me think of something. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Okay, got it. Is it a person? No. Is it a place? No. Is it a thing? Yes. Is it in your kitchen? Yes, probably. Is uh is it hot? No. Is it cold? It can be room temperature. It's room temperature. Is it a fruit? No. Is it a vegetable? No. Is it in a fridge sometimes? It can be, but no. Is it in a dishwasher sometimes? No. It... It's <laughs> definitely in the kitchen. Well, currently it, it, it is. It can be anywhere. Is it a piece of furniture? No. You have nine questions left. Is it a fly? No. <laughs> um, it's a thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not going to count that, but yes. Um, does it start with the letter S? No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to help you out here because you only yeah. have seven questions left. Okay. A lot of times people ask things like, um, I've never done this before. Is it bigger than a toaster? Is it smaller than an elephant? Is it, um, is size it is size is good? Um, it, you know, it's a thing, but you don't know what kind of thing. So is it something, is it a toy? Is it edible? Is it, you know, like there's, oh, you yeah. ask things. There's worlds of possibilities. There's worlds of questions that, that could narrow this tapped. down and, and, and not just like, like, is it a fly? The, how about the letter S? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Is it, is it a, um, how, how big is it? You can't ask that. <laughs> is it as big as a toaster? Smaller. Smaller than a toaster. 
Okay. So is it, you, so is it I, a toy? Is, is, these are supposed to be yes or no questions. Yeah. Uh, is it a toy? No. You have five questions left. Do you use it? I have enjoyed this. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ask more, four more. I can't forget. Is it smaller than the toaster? That was, yes. I said that. Yes. Tin foil. <laughs> it's not the time to be guessing. No, it's not tin foil. <laughs> you are not going to guess this. <laughs> um, do you, if when you've used it, do you clean up after it or do you just leave the mess? Well, me personally, yeah, I don't clean it because mm. I wouldn't clean this, but yes, it needs to, there's an element of it that needs to be thrown away when you use it. I'm giving you way too much information, but I'm trying to help you yeah, out no, here. You didn't say yes or no. You said I said a lot of things. It needs to be thrown away. An element of it needs to be thrown away. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But it's not in the fridge or freezer? No. It can be, I guess, but no. You could put it there if you wanted to. Is it at this moment covered in flies? No. <laughs> One more question. <laughs> Is it a light bulb? No. Oh. It was a lollipop. So sure it was a lollipop. <laughs> Close. It sounded the same. I thought you were going to say. Yeah. So usually you ask questions that narrow it down. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know it's a thing. And people can do this. I, oh, yeah. I, I've, I've, I yeah. failed miserably at that. But, I, yeah, but I've heard of 20 questions. But yeah. This is not do you want to try to do it to me? Um, you can think of anything in the world. Like I just oh, did lollipops. That was lollipop, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to do one? And see if I can get it. I probably won't be able to either. Honestly, I'm not good at it. All right. You got something? Yes. Okay. Um, is it edible? Uh, maybe. Sometimes. I think people eat it. Okay. Is it smaller than a coconut? Yes. Uh, hmm. Did you say you said it is edible? It can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have one in our kitchen? Probably. Yeah. Hmm. Is it meant for eating or is it just something you can do with it? I would say it's more like something you can do, but not certainly it's not, not meant, meant for, for eating. It. Yeah. Is it living? Yes. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I it, see what you're doing here. Um, is it. So we have one in our house right now. Probably. Yeah. I just wasted that question. Mm -hmm. You said it twice. Yeah. I'm not counting your questions, by the way. Is it an insect? Uh huh. Um, how did you, how are you already there? <laughs> I, I was just saying tinfoil and light bulb, <laughs> like 10 questions more deep. I was just saying tinfoil and light bulb. Um, I'm really bad at this. Is huh? it s smaller than a spider? No. <gasps> what? It's living and we probably have it in our, hmm. And people can eat it. It depends on the size of the spider. But yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, is it bigger than a quarter? Sometimes. Ah, oh, darn it. I hate a sometimes answer. <laughs> um, have, am I scared of it? Uh, I wouldn't say you're scared of it. Mm. It's an insect? Mm -hmm. And I'm not scared of it? Not like, I wouldn't say you're scared, no. Hmm. It's bigger than a spider. I think that would be 20. No, that was 10. No. Um, yeah, it's 10 more. Bigger than a spider? Sometimes. I don't know. There's different sizes of spiders. Wait, I can't remember what you said. This is not me asking another question. This is me remi getting reminded. It you said like it's a bigger than a quarter. Uh, I said it. I, I didn't say it was bigger. What did you ask I'm, me? Yeah, I did. If it's in bigger. relation to monetary size, I did. I asked you if it was bigger than a quarter. I can't I, remember what you I said. Can be. I don't know. Sure. A big one. Yeah, I don't know. It's an insect in our kitchen currently, and I'm not scared of it. And it's bigger than a quarter. That doesn't exist. An insect bigger than a quarter that's in our kitchen that I'm not afraid of. I can't believe this. Does it fly? A podcast. Uh, no, no, it doesn't fly. Hmm. Then I'm scared of it. Okay. Um, does it, hmm. Does Flynn know what this is? Yeah. Like not, he doesn't know it as a bug. He knows actual what it is. Mm -hmm. Cricket. I got it. Oh uh, no, that was like forty questions. It it was fourteen. Uh huh. So I got it. I won. Our son, 
He loves crickets. Found a cricket the other day in and our I'm, house. Uh, by the way, very scared of crickets. Are you? <laughs> yes. You were scared of I them. I hate crickets. Um, <gasps> I do. You hate them? I'm not a fan of crickets. Okay. Well, uh, he found one. And we were like, oh, yeah. And we've been saying this. We've been playing this game with him. We, we've been asking him what things names are. Is it like for, for him to creatively come up for the name of something? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have it on video. He thought about it for a second. And he goes, the cricket's name is Buttis. Buttis. And it was serious, guys. It wasn't a joke. He wasn't like being funny. Like he was like, it's Buttis. B-U-T-T-I-S. Mm -hmm. Buttis. Uh, and so now we still continue to play that game with him. And every time we're like, what's its name? Whether it be anything now, anything. he knows it gets a laugh. So everything is now Buttis. Mm -hmm. But that one cricket is still named name? Buttis. Yeah. And we let the we let Buttis go outside. And every day he looks for Buttis caught, outside. I caught Buttis with him with a, a, a cup and a piece of, of an, and an envelope that mm -hmm. I put under the cup. And released him. Now, now whenever he sees a cricket, it's Buttis. Mm -hmm. It's the same cricket. Yeah, he loves Buttis. And anything else he wants to name is Buttis. Mm-hmm. But us the cricket. Gets well, rest in peace, but us. I hope you're. Um, Is he dead now? Probably in our backyard. I don't know the lifespan of crickets. I feel like it's not long. Can't be. But uh, this was a fun episode. Sorry you had to listen to us like struggle through games at the end there. That's not really our jam on this podcast, but we thought it might be fun to end this week. Did you guys like it? Or hate it? Um, oh, don't I tell hate us. It. <laughs> don't tell us if you hate it. it We're was too fun fragile. For me. It was fun for me too. Let's continue to do them off air. Okay, we should. Let's keep going. Um, I want to do guys. one more twenty question because I feel like I could get it. Yeah, now. I think you could get it now. You just yeah. needed a practice round. I yes. think that's true. I think you'd be really good at it. Um, okay, so thank you to Chris, um, our wonderful editor, producer, brother-in-law slash brother slash friend slash amazing human. Thank you to TJ, my lifeline, um, and wonderful producer of the show and thank you to you guys for listening we love you all so much thank you to our sponsors we got t-shirts good trouble comes back uh july 14th and here's the song of the day from one of you guys thank you we love your covers and have a wonderful week bye The world is scary and we're locked in our home But now we have big microphones So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast